All right, here's a few news stories. Uh, let me get to the right page, which is here. All right. So uh, Ozempic and WeGovy and a bunch of similar ones are supposed to be the miracle drug, and apparently not so much. There's a large category of people, including people with diabetes, who take this drug and they don't lose weight. So uh, it may be not so great after all. And uh, they only lose a little bit of weight or none at all, and then it stops helping. Um, so they say only 14% of patients lost more than 5% of body weight. Well, well then they say one third lost 10%, so that's contradictory. So I think we're getting typical mainstream media that doesn't really understand numbers or science here. But anyway, the basic point is that apparently it doesn't cause everybody to lose weight. There's people for whom it fails, so that's interesting. It, Yes, it's very expensive, although it's much cheaper than the health consequences of being fat, and it would come, and mass production would bring it down. And a lot of people are predicting huge worldwide usage of it, but maybe not, not if it doesn't work so well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like $10,000 a year or more now, but that's just a matter of making more of it, which they supposedly will make more of it. Cost is 70? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah. Anyway, we'll see what comes of it all. This one caught my attention, and the one after it, quite amazing. This is the world's first digital therapeutic for major depression. It is not a drug, it is an app on a, on a phone or on a screen. It is a medical device. It has a six-week program with cognitive emotional training exercises for the brain, and they've shown that it works. So that sounds kind of like hippie nonsense you wouldn't believe. But the next one is even more so. Um, meditation harming people. I've never heard of this before, but as soon as I posted this, a guy came up and said he went to this place and did this stuff called Vispana meditation, and it's absolutely as crazy as they say. Um, so Vispana, this stuff... Uh, they get you to go on this retreat. They tell you to stick with it for like 10 days or something, whether you like it or not. You meditate 10 hours a day. You eat almost nothing. And um, apparently a lot of people, by like the fourth day, start having really intense bad experiences of fear and panic. And, and they tell you you have to just go through that. And a lot of them have serious problems thereafter. So I, I'm amazed that it would do you this much harm with no drugs, but apparently it does do a lot of harm. And uh, that's what they're saying. So both of those are interesting. Um, of course, the ancient religious people talk about how meditation can do great things for you, but that's like after years of practice. I, the idea that just a few days of meditation could completely mess you up, <laughs> or that a few weeks of some kind of guided therapy would significantly improve your major depression is very surprising. Of course, I would, it'd be great if it's true, um, if you can use these non-pharmaceutical interventions, I just wonder if it's really true. Um, certainly, most people I've heard of talk about how the major uh, success of modern psychiatry is because of drugs. That they used to have talk therapy and stuff that doesn't really work, and then for many cases, the drugs actually work. Anyway, uh, interesting claim. We'll see if anything uh, comes out of it. So Microsoft... Now that I'm doing corporate work, I'm using Teams all the time. Teams is what Microsoft turned Skype into. So Teams is an instant messenger, and it's designed to integrate with your calendar and integrate with your meetings, so you can attend meetings virtually very well. And now, in Europe, they forced them to separate Teams and Office. Now, this is what the United States almost did in 1998 when we had an antitrust a lawsuit against Microsoft, but there was a presidential election to throw it. And it didn't break up Microsoft, but in Europe, they're apparently not that shy about it. Like I say, all the internet and tech um, regulations seem to be coming from Europe. And so they're going to separate Teams into an office in Europe, and therefore they're going to separate them globally. Now, separating the two just means when you buy one, you don't get the other. Um, what the next thing antitrust people do is actually break the company, right? To make separate companies to do the two. And they're not talking about that yet. But... Um, that's, that's an issue. And this is, of course, the major thing about monopoly abuse, which is why there's a huge lawsuit against Apple also now. If you control something like the App Store, you can use it to control everything. 
and limit what people get. And they claim Apple's doing that. Microsoft certainly did it back in the days when they were really popular, like 99% of all desktops, like at the end of the last millennium. Anyway, um, we'll see what comes to that. So I've been expecting this. I figured this is probably one of the most likely things that will put Trump back in the White House. So ISIS-K is from Afghanistan. They just hit a big terrorist event in Russia because they're still mad at Russia for their invasion of Afghanistan a few decades ago. And of course, they're even more mad at us for our invasion of Afghanistan after the Russians left, and they want to hit us here. And if they do, I think this may very well bring Biden down because it's all Biden's fault. I mean, every, every military leader told him, don't remove the troops from Afghanistan. If you do, ISIS will just take over. And he just left, and ISIS just took over, exactly what everybody said. So it completely degenerated back into a hotbed of terrorists. And uh, it's, it's like the worst thing Biden did was his hasty, foolish, poorly executed withdrawal from Afghanistan. And anyway, they do want to target us here, although this article says our defenses are so strong they can't figure out how to target us here. Well, I hope that's true, but I'm not so sure. We'll see. Just ask Al-Qaeda. Yeah, yeah, Al-Qaeda got in, and now supposedly we have better defenses, but um, we don't have any eyes and ears in Afghanistan either. I'm, I'm very skeptical that we're safe from them. Uh, yeah, What did they do? They, they stopped the IS from going in, so they, they, they were doing something right. How did they stop them? Huh? How did they stop them from going in? They, they, uh, they do a lot of monitoring and also do a lot of um, vocational school training and every business in and just get, get the people to work so, so they don't go do crazy stuff. Well, I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm afraid our free society is not going to allow that kind of activity here. We'll see. Anyway, so apparently after Navalny was killed, hackers stole the Russian prisoner database and published it and changed the price for goods in prison to a very low price so people could buy it. And, you know, they hacked all the computer systems to punish people for the death of Navalny. So that's kind of nice, I guess. Uh, let me check for comments here. Teams is getting better. Yeah, Teams is very popular. Teams works pretty well in my experience. A lot better than like Cisco, um, whatever the Cisco meeting product is, WebEx. So this one is pretty amazing. Um, and everyone says this was a nation state attack. Uh, there's a compression utility called XZ that's built into essentially all Linux and it's used by OpenSSL to negotiate uh, SSH or OpenSSH, one of those two. And um, there was a two-year program to sneak malware into it. The, they, they made a fake identity of a fake developer whose identity has never been revealed. They made friends with the real developer who was complaining there's so much bother to develop this and I'm running out of time and I'm overworked. So they convinced him to hand over the project to this new developer. The new developer snuck in the malware in a way it wouldn't be caught, which I guess it would have caught me too. When you go to an open source project on GitHub, you see all the source code in a folder, but then when you download it, you get a tarball that you unzip. So he put the malware in the tarball, but not in the source. And nobody ever checks to make sure those two match. I certainly never have. So there was malware concealed in what was one of the test inputs. There's a, I mean, you get a professional programming project from GitHub, there is their unit tests you're supposed to, you can run to verify that it's working. One of the folders has those tests in them. I've never used it, I never care, but you're there. So we just added a test that included some encrypted malware that it would run, and the malware, this was Gia Tan, the fake GitHub user, who may or may not be a real person, spent two years developing this attack, two years developing the connections, building it in, and then once it's in there, um, it can break into your SSH sessions, I think, by stealing the key. Let me see if I can find that statement of exactly what it does. Um, the impact. Yeah, I think it was, might have been another article said, I think it steals your SSH keys. Anyway, it's, and it gives, the enemy, if enemy, if it gives people arbitrary code execution. They're able to execute extra code while you're supposedly just validating a cryptographic key. And so the thing people say is this, there are probably a lot more out there like this. This was almost certainly a nation state. Almost nobody else would have the skill and the patience and the resources to do this. So you wonder how many other open source projects have been poisoned in this manner and whether you can find them. So people are freaking out and scrambling just like they did after solar winds when they discovered that uh, 
supply chains are not trustworthy. So that's uh, an important issue. We're just getting them early stages up now.